All right, time to learn about lists in Python. We also call these arrays in a lot of other programming languages, but uh, let me show you what I mean. So, so far you've been learning about variables, for example, uh, integers, um, then we've got uh, floats, and then we've got uh, strings. Um, you've also learned about booleans. So uh, we know that text or strings take up the most space in memory, uh, followed by floats, followed by integers, lastly by booleans, which are the smallest because they can only have two values. But there's another type of variable. We call these lists or arrays. So let's start with a, something like a book list here. So the format, sorry, not double quotes first, it's actually those braces or square brackets, whatever you want to call them. Let's throw in a few books. We separate values in a list by commas and we wrap the values in double quotes or single quotes actually. Either one is fine in Python. So let's throw in a few and one more. All right, whoops. Notice if I don't put double quotes around it, it thinks it's a variable name and it's actually going to give me an error if I try and run that. Says, hey, what are you talking about? So let's put our double quotes around it. Okay. So let's print a few of these things out. Um, normally when you print out something like a variable, print out the value, no problem. If we wanted to print some text, oops, no problem. Does it without the quotes, just like it does with the numbers. But let's show you what happens when we print out a list or an array. I can't get used to calling it a list. I know we call it a list in Python, but I'm so used to calling it an array. Anyway, take a look here. So it prints everything out. Uh, notice it substituted single quotes, except here. Why did it use double quotes on Ender's Game? Well, you can probably guess, because we had a single quote in the name of the, of the book, so it needed to use double quotes to indicate, indicate the beginning and the end of the value. So when we print out arrays, um, we're typically not going to print out the entire thing. The, entire, the whole point of having a list is so that we could reference a particular value when needed at a certain time. We typically won't print out the whole list unless we use a loop, which we'll learn later in this chapter. So for now, here's what I want to do. I want to show you how to access individual items in the list. So let's print out uh, Ender's Game uh, and, and, and Ender's Game only. To do that, let's go to Book List and reference the spot number two. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and print this whole thing out. There's no point in referencing it. We're not going to do something with it. So let's print out location two. So Jurassic Park, is that what you expected? If you're a brand new programmer, probably not. So arrays or lists are what we call zero based, meaning the first item is always zero, the second is one, two, three, and so forth. So if I want to list n long, I always make it n minus one uh, total locations. And if you have some programming background, you probably noticed that we didn't have to declare the array and give it a size before we used it. Uh, Python is extremely loosely typed um, for data science here at least. And um, yeah, we're able to just go ahead and declare the array and reference the values. So let's keep going on. Uh, we get now that number two refers to actually the third position in the array. Let's take it a step further and make a different sort of array. I keep calling it array list. All right, so this one I'm going to call my list. And we're going to set this equal to something else. We're going to make the first item in here, uh, I'll make it chocolate. The second item is the number 34. Third item is the number 26. Yep, I'm making the point that we can have different types of values in each one of the locations. Let's make the fourth item something else entirely. The fourth item is another array. So inside of house, or sorry, inside of this nested array or nested list, I've got house first and 12 and 8.6. So I've got integers, floats, shoot, we can even put uh, booleans in there too. So I've got a little bit of everything, including other arrays. So we call this, yes, a nested array. Uh, you might think of it another term as a jagged array. So let's use Excel to show you exactly what this would look like if we were using an Excel spreadsheet. Sometimes it's easier for people to uh, uh, follow up with what's going on here. So basically what we made was a list. Let's call this one my list here. And um, this is, we'll call, an, we'll call this the nested list. So let's do this. We've got the first one is chocolate, then 34, 26, 
Then the next one is um, a list like that. And inside of this list is something else. So what I'll do is I'll use this to indicate that there's a nested list over here that includes house 12, 8.6, and false. Then this continues. Actually, there's nothing else. No, let's let's put one more just so you can see that you can still have other things after that. Um, uh, something else right there. All right. All right, so this is what we have going on. We have the first list. Actually, you know what? I think what I want to do instead, to make this easier, is flip it. Let's paste transpose like that. Delete that out of there. All right, so here's this list. You know what? Let's just go like this. This might be easier for you too. So in this list called my list, first item in position what? That's position zero. Let's make that clear. My list, and then this is the position within my list. This is position 0, 1, 2. This inner list is position 3, and then something else is position 4. Now, I'm going to pull this back down again because this has its own set of positions. Uh, house is the first or the zero position of in the inner array of position 3 of the outer array. So how do I reference this? So here's what, actually, I think this might, let's do it this way. House is position three, colon, zero. It's the third of the outer array and the zero of the inner array. 12 is third, colon, one. 8.6 is third, colon, two. False is third, colon, three. So chocolate. I'll put position zero to help you understand. 34 is position one, 26 is position two, and then something else is position four. Let's see if that helps you follow what's going on here a bit better. Oops, there we go. So my list is a jagged array in this position. Zero, we have one item, we have a string, integer, integer, another list and a string. And within this list, we reference this as position three. Now notice these, it's just position zero. I don't have to do zero colon anything because there's only one item in that position, but it's here where I have a nested list where I have to have three colon and then the reference of that inside list. So with that understanding, let's go back here and let's print something out. What if I want to print out chocolate? See if you can do that without watching me. Pause it if you need to. All right, I'm assuming you gave it a, ch a shot. Let's print out, whoops, my list. Let's print out location zero. There we go, that's chocolate. So therefore location one is 34. If I were to print out location three, what's it gonna do? Hopefully you guessed print out the entire inner list. So there you go, there's the inner array list because that's what's in position three. So if I want to print out just 8.6, I'm going to go 3 colon what? I'm going to go 3 colon 0, 1, 2. Oh, didn't quite work. That's because I don't use the colon right here to reference it. So sorry. I, I threw you off a little bit. I use the 3, then a second bracket 2. I should use that in my video to make it a little bit easier to follow. Um, there we go. Outer array three, inner array two. Inner array location three, that should give me false. Inner array location zero, that gives me house. Let's say I uh, change my mind about one of my values in my array here. Chocolate should actually be a vanilla. So even after an array has been declared, I can change the values in the array by referencing specific locations. So for example, my list zero equals vanilla. There we go. So now let's uh, print my list. See that prints out properly. Yep, there we go. So I changed the value afterwards of zero to, or sorry, position zero to vanilla, print it out. There it is. Um, I can also add items to the list. Let's say I want to say uh, my list, uh, let's dot append. So append is a function of the, my, of the 
list object. So uh, dot append uh, only works if the variable is already a list. We can say dot append and we can add a value. When we do this, we do it with uh, parentheses though, not the square brackets. So let's add something into that list. Um, uh, let's make it a number. Uh, 2048. It's 2 to the 11th. Okay, it's appended. Let's print out my list. There we go. Add it on to the end. Let's see here. Okay, I'm going to uh, burn through a bunch of examples of useful functions and methods that you can use with lists um, besides the basics that we've done so far. Uh, if you would like at this point, um, some of you may be fine ending the video and just looking at the table that I'll put in the book chapter that goes through all of them. Um, but I'm going to get started. Let's do some cool stuff here. All right, so we print that list. Next one I wanna do is simply find out the length of this list. I'm going to print len of my, whoops, my list. Six, all right, the length, because we have one, two, three, this uh, inner array, this, this child array inside this, or list, counts as one element. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, length is often gonna be useful. We can also do uh, max. Let's print max. Uh, my list. On this one, we get an error. Oops. Uh, let's try it with book list. I think it might be because I have different data types in there. No, yeah. uh, actually it is. It might be also because I have the child array right there. Um, so max on the book list uh, with text. Oh, I need to find out. I'm not sure how it uh, determines on text which one to use. However, let's make uh, an array of just numbers. Here's a more common use case here. Uh, numbers equals, and let's put in uh, 1698, 45, 14, and let's print out the max of numbers. Beautiful. Okay. Max value, um, min value works just the same as you might guess. Numbers. There we go. Number one. Um, but as you learn, you can't have a child array inside. And uh, with text, let me see if I can find it. Okay, there's just found it. With text, what it did right here was it returned, uh, back when I did that, it returned the road up in this list because alphabetically it was the last, um, it would be last in the list if sorted alphabetically, therefore the highest. Okay, let's keep going. We've got min. Let's next do, um, let's move on to some methods actually. So we learned the dot append method. So the difference between functions and methods, uh, the functions are uh, functionality we can perform on a list like length, max, min. Um, methods are things that the list itself can perform. So for example, up here when we did uh, dot append, append is a method of the list. So list dot append is adding to that specific list we call methods with a dot and then the method name afterwards. So with all programming, um, we have a combination of what's called objects and methods, um, uh, sorry, properties and methods. Um, this uh, list right here is an object and that list object has properties such as length, which can be retrieved by using the length function. Max is a property, min is a property. The methods we, op we uh, access with a dot um, and the name of the method. So uh, that's not the same. Other programming languages use the dot and then the name for both properties and methods, but this is Python anyway. All right, next I want to show you the, the list dot uh, count method. That's a useful one. Let's show you that one. Let's print uh, numbers, numbers dot count and what we use count for it's not the same as length or len we don't want to count the number of items in the entire array or the list but if we want to we may want to count the number of times a specific value occurs like let's say how about the number 45 so i'd put the number that i want to count in the list called numbers so this dot count the number of times 45 appears it appears once let's um let's add that number a few times to show you how this will work let's uh, not count let's append Let's add to that 45, 45, 45. 
So it's going to add three and more of them, which means now if we do print numbers.count, uh, it should be four. Oh, what did I miss here? Let's see. Um, append. Uh, oh, append I can only use one at a time. That's right. So I could make a list with 345s and append the list, but it's okay. So now we added 45 once. So now when we print out the count, it's now two times in that array, just so you can see that it's in there. Let's print numbers. There you go. So now you can see the list we added. Um, oh, because we ran it again, it's added another 45. So now it produces three. All right, let's do another one here. Let's move on to, um, let's say I want to find out now where the first time 45 appears in, in the list. So I'm going to print numbers dot. Um, this is going to be index. Index refers to the location in the array. So remember the index here is zero for the first one, uh, then one and so forth. Come on, get rid of this print. There we go. Index of 45. Now 45 appears three times. So what's it going to print? It's going to print the lowest index or basically the first time 45 appears, which is number three, because this is the zero position, one, two, third position in the list. Okay, next let's insert another number 45 in here between the six and the 98. So to insert a value into an array, let's do numbers.insert the index. So notice it gives us a little hint here. Well, to insert something, tell us where you want to put it first and then put the object you want to insert next. So if we want to insert into the, into between the six and the 98, that's going to be position two, because this is zero, one, and we want to put a 45 in the two position. So we put two here, then the number 45 next. And just to make sure that that worked properly, let's go ahead and print out numbers again. All right, there we go. We got another 45 right here in between the six and the nine. That's our insert. Uh, next, all right, we've appended numbers to the end. We've inserted into the middle. Let's now remove some numbers. Let's say numbers dot remove. Uh, once again, it's going to be this time we just need um, the object. So we've had it with 45s. Let's remove all 45s. Now let's print out numbers and see what we got. Uh, oh, it, sorry, it just removes the first index of that number of the 45 and now it's gone again. Um, just to be clear, as so you can see, the 45 that was right here in between the 6 and the 98. All right, let's do one more here. I want to do, uh, let's do sort. So what we're going to do is we're going to say numbers.sort. The most simple sort is going to sort uh, if it's numeric, least to greatest, if it's alphabetical, A to Z. So we run numbers.sort first, and then let's print numbers after that. Let's see what we get. Okay, so now we got 1, 6, 14, 3, 45 is 98. Numbers are in order. This can be uh, super useful. I think we can even reverse that. Let's see if this works. Numbers dot reverse. Now let's print numbers. Yep, sure enough. So we can sort uh, least to greatest, A to Z, and then reverse it if we want uh, to go greatest to least, Z to A. All right, that's a good set of uh, functions here on lists and uh, these are worth reviewing because when it comes to data cleaning later on in our data science tasks uh, we're going to use all these at, at uh, various times but we'll call it good now for this video